is the Business of Reselling podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Oman. Hey, hey, everybody. It is time for episode 33 of the Business of Reselling podcast. I am back from vacation. I am excited to be back and do another episode again, but I have to say I'm having serious FOMO right now because the Boss Reseller Remix is going on right at this moment in Las Vegas, and I am so jealous that I am not there. I was a speaker there last year, and I hope that I will be again, Um, but regardless, I have to make sure that I attend next year because I am seeing posts on social media from people who are there and meeting folks and just enjoying um, being with Katie and Vicky and being in Las Vegas and the whole vibe and hanging out with other resellers. And yeah, I just kind of wish I was there. But at the same time, it's kind of a blessing in disguise that I'm not because honestly, our warehouse is a complete disaster. So that's kind of what's inspired my episode today is I just want to talk about um, when you should maybe stop sourcing because we are kind of overwhelmed with inventory and I am looking for your advice. So flip the script a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about when it might be a good idea to stop sourcing and then the counter argument to that, play a little devil's advocate um, and talk about why you should never stop sourcing. And I would love your opinion on my current situation. Okay, so we'll get into that in just a minute, but uh, I do have to talk just a little bit about Portugal because what an incredible place. Have you been there? I had never been there. I had been wanting to go for a long time. Um, Johan did not go. He stayed home and I, I traveled with a friend and it was only 10 days um, but wow, was it ever glorious. What a stunning place. The history, the architecture, the colors of everything, the beach. Oh, I had never touched the Atlantic Ocean before. So that was a very cool thing that I got to do a whole bunch of times. Um, the food is incredible. The people are warm and welcoming and friendly and I honestly was just really blown away by it. Um, I knew that 10 days was gonna feel too short. Um, and it, it like, it felt like enough time for a vacation, but, uh, I just didn't get to do and see all of the things that I wanted to. And I, I knew it was going to feel that way when I left. So it's like, I'm satisfied, but I'm already thinking like, when in my life am I going to go back? (laughs) Because, um, I was really just blown away by that place. What an amazing place. Um, so the store did well while I was gone. I actually ran a 20% off sale on almost everything in the store because I knew that I was not going to be listing. Um, I wasn't going to be sending a lot of offers to watchers or engaging a lot with promotions or anything like that. So I thought I'm going to run this sale and that'll at least, you know, keep the algorithm happy and move some inventory while I'm away. And it worked. Uh, Our revenue on eBay did not dip too much. And our local revenue was really strong um, because uh, we've been dealing with this estate. There's a a house full of stuff that we bought about a month ago and we have a deadline for getting everything out of there. Um, It's getting close. The house is almost empty um, and we've brought most everything that we haven't already listed or sold into our warehouse or into our home, um, which I'm not thrilled about, but that's the reality of it right now um, because we have to empty out the house. Uh, So that's how it is. Uh, Johan worked really hard while I was away on local sales, trying to get the big items listed. So this estate had a lot of tools in it, you know, table saws and like miter saws and routers and things like that. So uh, it's a lot of volume. And our warehouse can't handle a lot of large items. So we had to sell those things really quickly. So he worked hard on that. And our local sales were excellent. Um, But because, you know, he was handling the shipping and the labels and doing extra stuff that I normally do, um, as well as trying to deal with this estate and our deadline on it, um, it's too much work for one person to also be getting stuff ready for eBay. So that meant things were not getting photographed for eBay. Our listing helpers didn't have any projects to work on. And of course, all of that 
um, slowdown in momentum is going to affect our sales overall. Um, so, so that's fine. Um, you know, it still went pretty well. Um, but <laughs> this tool estate has been like overwhelming kind of in a fun way. Um, but it's just like, we're just bringing all this stuff into the warehouse and just putting it. And then we had like these rolling carts that came from the house and that those are just covered with things and like, oh, but of course we're addicted to sourcing. So, uh, I think it was like last weekend, you know, we decided to go for a walk in the forest, which is something we like to do kind of, you know, on the weekends or just to take an afternoon off or whatever. Uh, but, uh, of course I always check Craigslist on the way to the forest to see if maybe there's something we could pick up to pay for our gas. And I found that someone was giving away a couple of old cedar chests and those are nice, like the storage chests. You know, we always get 50 to a hundred dollars for them. Um, and the house was on the way to the forest. So I'm like, Oh, I'll email the guy. And so I did. And he called me and said, yep, come on over. They're here. And when we pulled up to the house, we realized oh, this is like a whole house full of stuff that they were emptying. And so we immediately got distracted by a bunch of other cool, like smaller items in the house. And they let us walk through and Johan spotted this uh, uh, little pile of like old license plates sticking out of a box and said, oh, are those up for grabs? And the guy said, yeah. He says, oh, there's another whole box of them in the garage. Do you want them? Uh, yeah, and it wasn't one box; it was like three boxes, and they were they they dated all the way back to 1914. So this was like this is like a Scoocum collection of license plates, like a really really good one. And uh, I love selling license plates. I haven't talked about license plates much on the podcast because it has been probably six years, at maybe five years, five years at least since we got a great collection of vintage plates like this. And this is just a bonanza. Like, oh, it's so great. So we had to process those all really fast. Anyway, we filled up our entire truck full of stuff. We got a doll collection, which turned out to have nothing special in it. But, uh, you know, we got a few other trinkets and just little vintagey things. And we just like packed the whole truck full. And oh, yeah, the chests, like we took those as well because we said we would, but it was like an incredible amount of inventory. And we told them like, we're resellers, like we're going to be putting this stuff on eBay. And they were, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, you do you, right? That we are getting rid of this stuff. And I'm just, I'm just so happy that those license plates didn't end up recycled or in landfill because there's a huge market for them and they're aesthetically quite cool. So I just, ah, I was so happy, but okay. Anyway, that's the story now because of that. And because of the tool estate, there's just like way too much stuff in the warehouse. It's a mess. Uh, I hate it. (laughs) I posted a photo of just a small part of the warehouse on a reseller group today. Like I being vulnerable, look at what we've done to ourselves. Like it's so bad. Um, We're definitely making progress for sure. You know, getting lots done. But, uh, you know, when the warehouse is super cluttered like this, I have a hard time being there for many hours. Um, I don't like a really cluttered workspace and now it's super cluttered. So the more messy it is, the less I want to be there, which just exacerbates the whole problem. Um, So we're definitely making progress, uh, but it's just not fast enough for me. And especially because I know we're going to end up with a whole whack of new inventory, like any minute, you know, like it could happen tomorrow or, you know, next week it's going to happen. Um, we need to have a warehouse sale. We have thousands of five and $10 items that, you know, we feel like they're kind of good enough not to donate, but not really good enough to sell on eBay. So they kind of get stacked in bins, you know, and for a warehouse sale, but it's October and we're Vancouver. And so like, what do you think it's happening right now? It's raining and it will rain until like March. So I don't know when we're going to have this warehouse sale. (laughs) And I'm this, I'm this person who's like, maybe Johan, maybe we could just like donate this stuff because it's taking up a lot of space. No, 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 no. It's great yard sale fodder. We have to have the yard sale, but then you have stacks and stacks of totes full of yard sale stuff taking up space for anyway. That's the issue that we're having right now, which is what 
um, prompted me to do a short episode today about whether you should ever stop sourcing. So I kind of, I don't know, I want to dive into this maybe further in another episode. And honestly, this kind of relates to my last episode, episode 32, where I talked about whether reselling um, leads to or exacerbates hoarder issues. So like, if you're interested in that, go back and uh, and listen to it. And I'm kind of feeling like, you know, we're in, we're getting into that like situation where it's just feeling a bit it's feeling a bit too full. We have always used our house, our basement of our house and our garage as kind of overflow um, when we have excess inventory, but I feel like even that's getting full and I don't know, it just makes me really uncomfortable. So there are two big reasons, um, or I don't know, I guess big, big things that could happen that might lead you or might lead me to advise you to stop sourcing. And one of them is when you run out of space, which, you know, I'm thinking to myself, we're in this situation where we're overwhelmed with inventory. What would I tell another reseller to do if they were in this situation? Because like, you know, I don't want to be a hypocrite here. But you should probably stop sourcing for a while when you run out of space. Now, if you were to ask Johan, he would say, we're not out of space. <laughs> we could just move things around and restack things and it's just messy. And we could just like, you know, make everything neat and tidy and then we'd have lots of room. This to me doesn't help. This is like putting a Band-Aid on something, you know, like it just makes the problem look like it's not there, but it's still there. Um, so if you have run out of space because I know many resellers work in much smaller spaces. You might be just working from an extra bedroom or the space under your bed or like your hall closet, whatever it is. When that gets full, it's time to assess what's in that space. And that's kind of what I um, had already started to do before I went to Portugal Um, In the last episode, I mentioned briefly about how I was taking like all the $15 items out of my store with a few exceptions and getting rid of them to create space in bins for more valuable inventory. I think that's a really important thing to do when you have limited space. You don't want junk taking up valuable space. Space is money. You always want to, I always think about like how much money can I put in every square foot of of my space. Um, So If you're running short on space, it's time to assess what's in there and decide whether some of those items should be purged or donated because they aren't likely to sell. Um, Or maybe it's time for a sale, whether that's a virtual sale, like in your eBay store or Poshmark store, or a warehouse sale like I want to have in order to make more room. So not only am I feeling like we're running out of space, but also our death piles and our sorting areas are so messy that we can't spread things out to organize and clean and photo items and lot them up and stuff like that and clean them. Um, Oh, I said that already. But anyway, it slows down the whole process of getting things listed, which, you know, that just makes the problem even worse. So it's like, I feel like our whole system is bogged down you know, and it just, I don't know, it gives me a little bit of anxiety. Um, So we need to deal with this space problem. We need to have the warehouse sale. It's super important. And I want to take and just like purge all of the small things that we're probably never going to deal with. So just get them gone to Value Village and just say bye to it. As well, we need to sell our listed inventory a little bit faster. So because that part of the warehouse is nice and organized and clean with the boxes and the bins and they're stacked neatly in the rows and it's so lovely. And that's where all of our stuff needs to be. (laughs) So I want to sell a bunch of stuff so there's lots of room in the bins so we can get the front of our warehouse cleared out because Ah, I'm probably making the problem seem worse than it is. But anyway, it bothers me a lot. So if I was advising somebody who was wondering if they should take a break from sourcing, I would ask them first, what, what's going on with your space and can you make your space better? So I guess that's the whole problem we're going to work on. The other reason you might want to stop sourcing, which is not currently a problem for us, but it can definitely be a problem, um, is when your cash flow is strained. So if your sales are slow, and you're struggling to keep your profits up, 
maybe it's time to withdraw from sourcing and try to sell through some of your items a little bit quicker um, so that you can generate some cash flow to buy more inventory. Now, people can get themselves into all kinds of trouble sourcing on credit if they don't get the cash back fast enough to pay those bills. Now, I'm not saying that you should stop sourcing if sales are slow, because in fact, sometimes the opposite is honestly true. If you need to generate cash flow, cash flow really quickly and you have a lead on items that you know are going to be fast sellers, then it can be worth buying more inventory, even if you are low on space and even if you are low on cash, as long as you know that those items are going to move quickly because you can solve your space and your cash problems relatively fast if you move through your inventory at a quicker pace. So we don't have this issue, but it's just something that I wanted to mention when you're thinking about, is it time to um, maybe take a break from sourcing for a while? Think about your cash flow situation and whether sourcing more would help it or hinder it. Now, the devil's advocate position is that you should never stop sourcing, and this would definitely be Johan's position. <laughs> um, you always need new hot inventory in your store if you want to maintain your cash position or scale up. Um, and of course, we all know how it feels to miss out on a great deal. And honestly, I have to say right now, as I predicted like last summer um, and many other podcasters and resellers predicted as well, there are a lot of great deals on good in inventory. The economy is what it is. Um, people are using the R word a lot. The recession seems kind of real. And people are selling collections because they need to pay bills. So we are finding inventory to be more readily available than it was even a few months ago. Um, and the deals, the prices are lower. So it's really, you know, if you have lots of cash to buy inventory, this is honestly an excellent time to do it. So um, I guess, you know, we're kind of taking the position of like, buy the inventory now and figure out your space problem later because we could end up in another inventory drought like we had during the pandemic um, and, you know, and just be kind of like grinding away to make, um, to make strong sales every month. So, you know, I get the argument for not sourcing, especially right now when there is a lot of really great inventory out there. And if you have the cash to buy it, the prices are low, this is the time to do it. Now, what we could do is like don't stop looking around for good deals, but maybe get more picky on what kinds of things we pick up uh, or just spend a little less time on sourcing. So Johan can source all day. He can just pick all day. He's always on Craigslist. He's on Marketplace. He's looking for the deals. He's always wants more. I tend to like withdraw a little bit when I feel like the warehouse is too cluttered. I think ah, I should – I better spending my time on processing items um, than on sourcing more. You know, and he says, well, if we if we just sourced more and then we had all of this amazing inventory, then we would just hire someone to process it. True, true. I, I get it. Um, but as long as we're just going to be rolling with the two of us and our virtual listers, like I think we kind of need to deal with some ebb and flow in this in the land of sourcing it's definitely a conflict source for us um he, you know he wants to source all the time i want to pull back and get things settled before i go at sourcing again now i realize that my approach can lead to some real dips in overall sales revenue because as you get through death piles you're like you're not listing the best stuff anymore right you know how it is you go you buy a collection you have a great haul you always list the hottest things first, the stuff you're most excited about, like, oh, I got all this great stuff. And then you list like the, the top 10% of it. At least that's what we do, you know, like the best things. Um, so you probably listed the best stuff when you were all excited about your haul and now you're dealing with the leftovers. And so that's where these death piles come. Like it's not that there isn't good stuff in there. It's just like, you know, I've gone from like listing $300 items every day to listing like $50 items every day. It's still good stuff. Um, but it's more of a grind. Um, so I, yeah, I get the never stop sourcing argument, but it, I, I don't feel like it can work forever, at least not without a faster way of listing uh, or more space and or more space to spread out our stuff. Um, and that requires more local help, which we currently don't have. So this is the conundrum. Now we're coming into the hot part of Q4. 
I don't know if sales have picked up for you yet. They haven't really picked up for us. They've been kind of average. It's fine. It'll it'll come around. But uh, this is the time when, you know, we're going to be more busy with shipping and selling than we normally are. And that might be less time for photography and less time for listing. And then if we keep buying more inventory, then that whole um, system is going to bottleneck, right? That's, you know, like I would talk about this with my business students when I used to teach, like you got to look for the bottlenecks and deal with those, let them out, then look for the next bottleneck and deal with that. So uh, my like MBA mind knows exactly what to do. My like emotional mind and my, uh, <laughs> and, and my, my relationship <laughs> health <laughs> is also a factor that I have to consider. So I can't just go in it with like a logical business brain and say, this is exactly what we should do. So I feel a little bit overwhelmed right now. Um, and if I don't, I'm just wondering if you were me, if you were me, what would you do right now? Would you stop sourcing for a while? Or would you keep that sourcing train rolling? That is your call to action for today. So if you are listening on YouTube, this is a great time to leave a comment. Um, should we stop? Should we keep going? What are your thoughts on taking breaks from sourcing? That is what I want to know from you. Now, uh, if you're listening to this podcast on Apple or Spotify or any other podcaster, don't forget that it is always posted on YouTube. And I do occasionally add video content to that channel as well. So it's worth going to youtube.com slash at storage warrior podcast and clicking the subscribe button there to make sure you get uh, all those videos when they come out. Um, that is everything I have for you today. So call to action. Should I stop sourcing or should I keep going? Next episode is going to be another top five because, um, I, my top five, uh, episode from a few weeks ago was pretty popular. So I'm going to do another one. That's going to be top five mistakes resellers make for black Friday. So black Friday is coming and we all have our different strategies and ways of helping our inventory move during that time. I see a lot of resellers making errors or what I perceive to be errors in their approach to selling at that time of year. So that's what the next episode is going to be about. I hope you love it. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.